Okay, first of all, I'd begin this presentation by reminding people that Alex Jones and InfoWars, they blacklisted me. Okay, I had this information on the FOIA documents in this cover-up back in February of 2012. And when I started writing about Alex Jones would not discuss or talk about this, even though all the information was forwarded to him, okay, I, they, were, they said, hey, you might be going to Alex Jones' show. Well, that Friday came and went in the Intel Hub, guys. Back then they were called the Intel Hub before they changed their name after they deleted my articles and I called them out. The Intel Hub said, hey, you might be going to Alex Jones. I thought, well, that's strange because I just wrote all these articles that he won't talk about Plumegate, and I've sent him all the information. Well, that Friday came and went, it was May 7th or 11th or something like that, it was a Friday, came and went, and guess who went on the show instead of me? Well, it was Arnie Gunderson, Arnie Fairwinds. He, he is for nuclear power. He's for safe nuclear power. Now, since then, Alex Jones has not touched upon these documents. Mike Adams hasn't touched upon it. The Intel Hub hasn't touched upon it. I accused them of this long ago, and I still continue to accuse all of those as being controlled opposition, else they would have taken my information. If you look at my letter I sent to Jones on May 1st, I was like, please write about the story. Use my story. Use any story. Anyone write about it. I don't care. Someone needs to write about the story. Well, they wouldn't touch it. They wouldn't touch it. So I'm prefacing that. You need to understand that before I attempt to debunk the unit for a disinformation, what I believe is disinformation that is circulating all over the net. Now, very quickly, let me explain to you why all these controlled opposition outlets, and again, this is treason. This is criminal because this information should have been released back when everything went down in Fukushima. They knew all about it. The reason they're downplaying this and spreading this disinformation is if they're going to pull all these rods out of the spent fuel pool number four, because they don't want you to know that those rods have already melted down. Okay, The only ones they're going to pull out of the spent fuel pool are the ones that were just recently put in the reactor, weren't there very long, and they're not hot. They're not hot. All the others had been thoroughly used, and they were very hot. So when the water ran out of spent fuel pool number four, which if Alex Jones, Intel Hub, Natural News gave a shit about these documents, they could have already proven that to you guys and showed you that the worst of the worst has already happened there. Now, let's first of all, before I, I have documentation, and again, I can't prove this 100%. But all the evidence in these FOIA documents indicates that spent fuel pool number four ran dry. It had a zirconium fire, a zircaloy fire, which you cannot extinguish with water. And, and those rods melted down, melted down. I've even heard there's video where the camera goes and as soon as it sees that corium blob, they turn the camera away and TEPCO looks away from it. So they know it's melted down now. First, let's have a look at the propaganda on Unit 4. Because it started back in May 6, 2012. Okay, this would have been, that sounds right. May 7th is when I would have gone on the Prison Planet show. And remember, I had written a number of articles, one of which Alexander Higgins hosted, which called out Alex Jones and National News and said, all these months went by. I sent them all this information. They wouldn't touch it. They're purposefully avoiding it. When those articles caught traction, guess what? They do what I call a hit and run, like RT. They mention Plumegate, and then they take off and do anything else, and they've been doing that ever since then. They'll only report on disinformation and low-level superficial issues, such as what they're doing with Unit 4 right now. Okay, so right now we're looking at a clip from Natural News back from May 6th. Fukushima reactor number 4, vulnerable to catastrophic collapse, could unleash 85 times cesium-137, radiation of Chernobyl, human civilization on the brink. Well, what Mike Adams didn't tell you in this article, and again, he's refused to look at any evidence from these FOIA documents, and they've been doing this for so long, turning a blind eye. I wrote a whole book. I wrote a whole book in that time that they've been ignoring these documents. Now, what Mike Adams didn't tell you in that article is his information came from Ambassador Roos, or if he did say that, he didn't tell you the full story about Ambassador Roos. Now, when Ambassador Roos gives you information that Unit 4 is sinking, I would take it with a grain of salt. Why? I've read the FOIA documents. I'm very much familiar with them, and I know that NRC withheld information from Ambassador Roos. Maps, plume models, sit reps were withheld from Ambassador Roos, so he's in a need-to-know basis, right? TEPCO's giving him information as they feel he needs to know it, and the NRC is also giving Ambassador Roos information they feel he needs to know it. So when Mike Adams says Ambassador Roos says that number four is sinking, I say, well, take that with a grain of salt. You're going to have to show me video evidence proof Hold the newspaper up so I can know it's the actual date and you're not faking some video. Again, I haven't seen any video of the rods in number four. Okay, they say they're pulling them out. Where are they? Show us the video. Show us the proof. Again, this was complete uh, disinformation that they wanted to cause a fear thing, number one, scare you up real bad. 
But number two, again, to convince you that the worst of the worst has not happened at Unit 4 yet, and I contest that. I say the documents say otherwise. Let's go to my next clip. Again, Natural News, October 16. This keeps coming out every so often. The idea is to continue to convince you that the worst has not happened at Unit 4. This one's titled, Ground Under Fukushima, Unit 4 Sinking, Structure on Verge of Complete Collapse. Now, this is a year ago, and this stuff has never happened. Just like former member or co Founder of the Intel Hub, Alex Thomas, said, well, maybe they're not reporting on Plumegate because of the impending Iran war. That was back in February 2012. And by the way, they scrubbed Alex Thomas from the Intel Hub, and they changed their name to the IntelliHub. But they deleted my articles, and they refused to print documentation on the FOIA documents. And when I started turning up the heat, they modified my articles. And when I questioned them, they deleted all my articles and wouldn't let me write for the Intel Hub anymore, right? Okay, next screen cap. Hey, the IntelliHub. Here's their new site called the IntelliHub. If you type in Alex Thomas, he doesn't exist there anymore. He no longer exists there. But it doesn't change the fact that IntelliHub is a pure disinformation outlet posting up mainstream articles and a whole lot of disinformation by Jacob Chamberlain from Common Dreams. This is complete disinformation. Now, they're saying 400 tons is the number of fuel they're going to pull out. I'm told from a very reliable source they will find less than 500 fuel rod assemblies because those are the ones that did not melt. The others are irretrievable. They did this junk shot to patch the hole, to patch the crack in the spent fuel pool number four. And NRC talks about the wall being blown out and there being no water. We're going to get to that. Again, I just want you to see these disinformation outlets do not want to go into these documents. And they've been foot dragging so long, so long now since these documents have been out. One man, with a little bit of help from Shazam, got to give him due credit, has written an entire book, an entire book, and they won't touch it. It's criminal. Alex Jones is a criminal. Intel Hub is criminal. Natural News is criminal. All these people are criminal. RT, anyone who's spreading this disinformation, and anyone who will not talk about the world's largest provable cover-up in these documents now, it's all provable. I wrote a book on it. I proved it. wrote a book on it. Next screen capture. Okay, again, radwatch.info, very questionable Facebook page, I'm told. And here goes, dangerous operation at Fukushima reactor number four. Could ignite atomic chain reaction in Telehub. Anyone who's promoting this stuff at the very least is extremely ignorant and just regurgitating what someone else has said. You've done no research. You know nothing. You have not looked into the FOIA documents. You do not know in NRC's own words what exactly is going on. And, and again, right here, the objective is to convince you that, oh, something really bad could happen. And I'm telling you now it already has. It already has. And you guys are criminal. By not fessing up immediately what happened to spent fuel pool number four, I have pictures of the burn off of the Zerk fire. We're going to look at that, too. We're going to have a look at that in a minute. Again, Fukushima apocalypse. Years of duct tape fixes could result in millions of deaths. Could? Well, that's already happened, RT. See, RT won't talk about the FOIA documents. RT won't talk about the cover-up in the FOIA documents. Adam Kokesh in the RT, he won't talk about it. Adam Kokesh goes on Alex Jones. Alex Jones won't talk about it. Mike Adams won't talk about it. Uh, Mark Dice won't talk about it. Do you guys see this whole disinformation ring? As I've accused them of since February of 2012, they will not report on this information. Even when you condense it, hand it to them on a silver platter and say, here's the information. Hey, put your name on it. If you look at my... Uh, I think it was March 1st that I sent to InfoWars writers. I was like, put your name on it. Take it. I don't care. Someone's got to write on this. I'll try to include that screen cap in with this particular uh, video here so you can see how long ago I sent this information. I was very magnanimous. I was like, I don't care who who writes about this. Information needs to get out. Right? That's why my book is free, and I did all this work for absolutely free for the kids, for the children. Not for the adults who seem to be screw-ups in this plan. Probably Unit 4 yesterday, but this plan was abandoned due to high dose rates. The dose rates around Unit 4 make entry impossible at this time. Hey, that's so important because when the water runs dry and those things heat up, what happens is they expand, they burst, and you have a zirconium fire. The cladding of these fuel rods is a credit card thickness zirconium. Once that catches fire, it's like magnesium. If you've ever seen magnesium burn, my dad's a, a nuclear physicist himself. He used to bring home from the lab... Uh, magnesium and be in a rolled up form like a little strip or be ground up granules in a powder type form and the magnesium we would put it on a, a brick outside in the front yard we lived out in the country so nobody's around we could do these things and my dad would be out there showing us and we light the magnesium it took a bit to get the magnesium to catch fire kind of like a sparkler but once you got it to catch fire that stuff went off and it burned and burned you could put water on it it's very difficult to put out zirconium is very similar it burns like a forest fire from the point where it initially 
a burst in a flame, it just spreads out from there and travels down the length of the fuel rod, consuming the zirconium cladding. And then you got a real problem because that stuff gets so hot it begins to melt and you have a mixture of zirconium and the corium and the uranium. It's a real mess. You can't, like they're saying, they're going to retrieve these fuel rods. You can't once they've melted. You cannot. You cannot. Okay, next screen capture from the 15th, Tuesday, March 15th, 2011. I'll read to you the highlighted portion. I couldn't sleep again last night. Michelle was doing a shift in the op center last night. She texted me, quote, U2 X vessel, U4 Zerk fire, SFP catastrophe. And there's two sections redacted says outside of scope. Well, it probably goes on there to really tell you exactly what happened in spent fuel pool number four, that they all melted down into a blob and they're irretrievable. So here's the important part. Unit four, Zerk fire, spent fuel pool, catastrophe. Folks, that says it all. This is what Alex Jones don't want you to know. Mike Adams don't want you to know that. IntelliHub don't want you to know that. I don't see informable posting this stuff up. I don't see it on any news. Again, I'm telling you guys, I've been adamant about this. 95% of all sectors of media are controlled to some degree, some more than others, but none of them are giving you this information. And, and they're certainly not connecting the dots like I have in my book, Plumegate. Really, I, I, I give you the big picture and put it all together. They'll give you one tiny aspect or some superficial aspect. They don't connect the dots and give you the worst of the worst and make the case that nuclear power has to be shut down and there's a huge cover-up and millions will die because of it. Okay, next screen cap. Um, let's look at the relevant section here. Lighting return to Unit 4 control room. i got to bring up the date on this, but I think this was like this was from a couple weeks in. And I just wanted to show you, I think this was like oh, March 24th or something like that. In any case, I have evidence where two, three, four weeks in, they still don't have power to these particular units, one, two, three, and four. They're bringing in a main uh, thing of power, but to get all the electrical components and switchboards, it's impossible. It's been salt water, inundated by salt water. I have a screen capture. The guy says, I don't know how they're going to restore power. I just don't know how they're going to do it. Well, they can't. They can't. It takes many months to get all the power back up which in the meantime, they're using these little water cannons, and NRC says, hey, that's totally ineffective, totally ineffective. So these things lost power and then essentially just sat there for weeks with nothing going on. Okay, the water sprays and the helicopter drops, ineffective, totally ineffective. Okay, next screen cap, I just found this last night while looking around again in these FOIA documents. Dig into them because there's all sort of good stuff that debunks these disinformation outlets that want you to believe what? that the worst of the worst has not already happened. That's part of Plumegate, right? The worst of the worst already has happened. They've been hiding it from us. It's been a massive cover-up, right? It says, Unit 4, Japanese have said the pool is not empty, but we do not see evidence that it has water in it. We are sticking with it as being empty. There's a number of flyovers where they got pictures and they could look at it, and Japan kept saying they could see a reflection off the bottom of the pool, that there was enough water for there to be a reflection. NRC says, no way, no way, folks. Okay, now let's look at some documentation where NRC officials are actually discussing the, the sublimation of that spent fuel pool down through the, the, the flooring of the spent fuel pool, through the concrete, through the rebar, and it melts down at a certain rate per hour in number of inches per hour, burns, it's so hot, 5,000 degrees, it burns right to that, down onto the torch where there'll be a major release of radio, radionuclides, and they're very concerned about this. Let me read to you what Dave Weller says. This is Dave Weller from the NR team. The other supposition had looking at those is there's a potential that as the core is in a dry pool or in a dry area, it is interacting with concrete and other materials. And you can be seen some interaction there that generates a little bit of smoke. And that might be what we're seeing. Mike Weber, yeah, there's where the gases would come off when that core hits the concrete. Okay, let's look at another clip. He's Brian Sharon. We don't, we don't know very much about the status is of pool in Unit 4. You know, as they were saying before, you know, if it went dry and Unit 4 had a full core offload on it, so it was fairly, still fairly hot fuel. If that fuel melted after the pool went dry and started interacting with the, with the concrete on the floor, you know, the worst situation is it goes through and it's going to fall down to the rooms below, which is where I think the Taurus is. So it's really hard to tell, redacted, redacted, but we can't really discern anything from that either. Next clip, Don Cool. And then we assumed you had 50% damage on the Unit 2 spent fuel pool, and then we had 33% on the Unit 2 reactor core with some things. So we might back out a couple of those components. But what you're telling me is that the assumption on 4, unfortunately, it's still too close to real. John Moniger, well, 
Don Cool. I didn't I didn't hear all the conversation. I walked in towards the end of it. John Moniger. There, there is no information that we have been given that gives us a clear assessment or insights on water levels in the unit. The best thing you see is the steaming on TV. Don Cool. And no steam on four? John Moniger. No steam on four. And they had they said, you know, several days ago, unit three, they believe, was dry back on March 18th. So when they're not seeing steaming, they know the water's boiled off and it's gone. It's boiled off and gone. And, and again, TEPCO's not honest with them, but these guys know they have manuals, NUREG manuals, GI-99. All these manuals tell them, like I've got a, a clip from Chuck Castro that says, look, the NUREG manual tells you in a station blackout, it's a certain number of hours, you're going to have a breach of containment. There's no doubt about it. So same thing here. They know a certain number of hours without cooling, without circulating water in that pool, you're going to have a boil off. A certain number of time after that boil off, you're going to have a zerk fire. A certain number of time after that zerk fire, you're going to have melted corium blobs. And a certain amount of time after that, it's melted through the concrete down into the torus, and the worst has already happened. It'll melt through the cracks. Okay, and there's evidence in these documents they did a junk shot and poured this stuff in there to try to seal up the pool so they could get water in it. Okay, next screen cap, Don Cool. The calculation that we did, this was the calculation done back on Wednesday with everybody grumbling at us about, oh, you're being unrealistic, you're crazy. Why don't you do 100% of the fuel in pool number four being melted? Question mark. But that sounds like what you're describing to me. Now, maybe we don't inaudible some of the other components. John Moniger, right. Don Cool. But the component of Unit 4 that we included was 100% fuel destruction on the Unit 4 pool if the pool was right, so you'd have an unfiltered, unfiltered release. Very critical there. It shows you they're, 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 very, they're adamant that pool's been empty and all that fuel is melted. And they're going to be doing modeling and looking at it as if that has actually happened. And I got plenty of evidence of models that are based on 100% of the fuel uh, destruction in Unit 4, like the guy says here. You'd have an unfiltered, unfiltered release. Prior to March 18, but actually March 18, out here in the morning, you know, which is about 48 hours ago, has been dry. Don Cool, as of 48 hours ago, John Moninger, greater than 48 because that's when they would have told us. Dave Skeen, and that's why they wanted to spray Unit 3 because they thought it may have been dry. John Moninger, right. But what they don't say anything about is there's been no steam off of Unit 4 for days. John Moninger, right, right. And they're, they told us that they're working Unit 4 also, you know, with the fire trucks and the spray systems, etc. But the big thing is, you know, they can work them, but they're not effective, right? And that's in my highlighted section. It shows you, yeah, again, many times they say that stuff's not spraying with the fire cannons, the, you know, hoses and the helicopter drops that don't do nothing. Unit 4 has been dry for days, no steam for days, for days, folks. You cannot have a spent fuel pool sit there with rods that have been used in it with no water for days. No, it just doesn't. The laws of physics say that's not how it works, really. Okay, next screen cap, Dave Skeen. Yeah, well, I'm going to go back to we haven't seen any steaming coming out of Unit 4 since early in the event, which leads us to believe that there's no water there to steam. John Moniker, yep, we agree with you. So the only thing I'm saying is, you know, we would be interested in the calculations, but we've got to be extremely careful what we do with them. Dave Skeen, yeah, we'll leave that up to you, but we'll get that information for you guys to have in your pocket anyway. Okay, so they, they know it's out of water. They know what the reaction is. They can do the calculations and show how much has been released and then it burned off and then it melted and what have you. But be very careful what you do with that information. It is not to reach the public, right? Even to the point now where I tell you this disinformation ring out there. All these places pushing that these rods are going to be pulled out, they're all disinformation outlets. Trust me on that one. And we will fight. Time will tell. Time will once again, I mean, gosh, how many times I debunk this stuff, once again, I'll be proven right when they don't pull out 1,300 rods. It's impossible. Okay, next screen cap, Brian Sharon, Marty Virgilio. But that's pulling on the piece of what was part of it. It's not, it's not a substantial drawback of the case because, quite frankly, we still think four is a melt on the floor in there. Okay? We still think four is a melt on the floor in there. Okay, down at the bottom, Don Cool goes on to say, yeah, let me, let me explain that quickly. That got started when we said... If they, if Narek runs the melt core worst case, can you get big numbers on the West Coast? And what might be a more realistic way to model what might happen? And Kathy Gibson put together three different possible options for how you would do that. So they're worried about, you know, that melt core is going to have a major effect on the West Coast. The rims, the number of thyroid, the doses to children is going to be very high. And I've showed in my, in my book, Plumegate, where they 
they take this modeling, they purposely downplay it. They can model in four to five days of emissions. They can say spent fuel pool number four, only 30% burned off. There's any number of ways to get around it. And if they keep doing that and come up with enough different scenarios, one of them will be low enough. President Obama can come out and say, we don't expect harmful levels of radiation. That's how they do it, folks. It's criminal. It's treasonous. Just as it's criminal and treasonous to deny the American public this information like these disinformation outlets are doing right now. Okay, here we go. This is about a Lubol fire, but they talk about Unit 4. Larry Camper, yeah, the Lubol fire may very well have been, you know, something far more significant coming out of uniform, because what we're now beginning to think, at least Don Cool and I, talking with the PMTs, Protective Measure Team, you know, it may well be that there was a seminal event in which the volatiles were deposited out there on the soil to the north-northwest of the site. And if that's the case, the good news is, that the volatiles are already out there. The bad news is the thing we're all trying to chew on is what's going on in Unit 4. Now in terms of any future consequences from the interaction of melted spent fuel material with concrete and so forth. Okay, I'm giving you a plethora of, of uh, evidence out of the FOIA documents where melt through to the floor, loss of water, zerk fire, catastrophe, folks. Now, now let's let me read to you briefly a clip I got from a um, a study that's kind of a follow-up to the Alvarez study, and it's about spent fuel pools and what have you. And his study's about the backlog of uh, spent fuel in, in America and the situation with that. And I'm going to read you two paragraphs about a zirconium fire. It's very interesting, the physics of this particular uh, thing. And, and look, let's look into it, because if you don't know about it, you don't understand why I'm saying once that zerk fire kicks in, it's self-oxygenating. If you pour water on it, it's so hot, it splits the hydrogen from the oxygen, and you have two flammable gases, okay? And this is how, in these reactors, the hydrogen buildup can cause an explosion. Well, when, that, when those fuel rods get hot, that zerk cladding bursts into flames, that water that's what's left in the tanks is basically, it's so it's heated to such a degree, it literally splits it into two flammable gases, and that, that self-feeds the actual fire. And I think I'm explaining that fairly. That's my understanding of it right now. So let me read to you from this particular study. I will link to the study as well. So these oxidation reactions can become locally self-sustaining, i.e. autocatalytic. It feeds itself. It's a self-feeding fire. They become self-sustaining at high temperatures, about a factor of 10 higher than the boiling point of water. If a supply of oxygen and or steam is available to sustain the reactions. These reactions will not occur when the spent fuel is underwater because heat removal prevents such temperatures from being reached. The result could be a runaway oxidation reaction, referred to in this report as a zirconium cladding fire. Remember that screen capture, zerk fire, catastrophe. Spent fuel pool for dry, zerk fire, catastrophe. Referred to in this report as a zirconium cladding fire that proceeds as a burn front in other words, as seen in a forest fire or a firework sparkler, it's like a forest fire spreading along the ground, along the axis of the fuel rod toward the source of oxygen, air or steam. The heat released from such fires can be even greater than the decay heat produced in newly discharged spent fuel. As the fuel rod temperatures increase, the gas pressure inside the fuel rod increases and eventually can cause the cladding to balloon out and rupture. At higher temperatures, around 1,800 degrees Celsius, approximately 3,300 degrees Fahrenheit, zirconium cladding reacts with the uranium fuel, oxide fuel, to form a complex molten phase containing zirconium uranium oxide. Beginning with the cladding rupture, these events would result in the release of radioactive fission gases and some of the fuel's radioactive material in the form of aerosols into the building that houses the spent fuel pool and possibly into the environment. If the heat from one burning assembly is not dissipated, the fire could spread to other spent fuel assemblies in the pool, producing a propagating zirconium cladding fire. So once one bursts into flames, it'll spread to the others like a forest fire. It's propagating. Boom. One hits the other, hits the other. Pretty soon, they're all on fire. Pretty soon, they're all melted into a blob. And then you melt on down and sublimate through the concrete. Again, I've given you a, a plethora of evidence from the documents that that's exact. NRC knew this, and, and all those, the, the majority of those bundles have already melted. Okay, this next picture is just a screen cap I found online when I looked into Zerk cladding fire. Hey, I came back with pictures of Unit 3 and 4. And it was titled Zerk Fire Burnoff. So there's your smoke. And this is very likely that particular event when there's no water, nothing to cool them. Hey, I mean, you're looking at the physics 
of nuclear power right now. This is just the reality of it, folks. Again, the disinformation campaign to convince you the worst hasn't happened has been very effective. And that's why I tell people, stop posting articles and videos from these disinformation sites. You legitimize them, and then when they start talking about Unit 4, and we're going to unload 1,300 fuel rods, you guys believe that stuff, and you're being fed disinformation. Right? You guys got to be, you got to become skeptics. And if you don't know about Plumegate, you cannot even formulate an opinion on this. You can't even know that Alex Jones isn't telling you the whole truth, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You really can't because you don't have the other side of the story. Okay, this next screen cap is from my uh, mentor and my expert consultant, Shazam. And here's what he, we had a discussion about this. And there's a video somewhere out there of the melted blobs, if you can ever find it. But it's very much suppressed, and they don't want this out there. And all those aerosols already leaked out. We've been hailing this stuff since uh, for over 800 days now, Z xenon and other radioactive gases. And Shazam says the new fuel that was to go into the reactor is all they're after. They're going to find less than 500 assemblies out of 1,700. So they're going in there to retrieve the 500 ones that were just recently put in the reactor. They, didn't, they weren't down there very long, so they're, they're removed before the decay heat becomes extreme. Okay, So they can drop them in the pool. Those might have been in the reactor for a short enough period of time. You can pull them out, and without the water circulating around them, they're still not going to overheat. Now, you know you can hold a fuel rod before it's inserted when it's brand new, you can hold one in your hand and it's not going to hurt you or do anything to you. Once it's been activated for some time, then it becomes really radioactive and the, the temperature increases. Connect screen cap, Shazam goes on to say, it wasn't hot, no residual heat, no cladding would have melted, so therefore it's still intact. He's referring to those 500. The other went corium. That means it melted into a blob, leaked out, patched up the leak. That's that junk shot I was telling you about. Now get evidence on that as time allows. Filled with water and public drinks the Kool-Aid. Again, that's the end of my, basically, my presentation. I would remind you one more time. You know, if you want the truth, you're going to have to look for it. You're going to have to work for it. You're going to have to earn it. You have to earn it. And you'll never know the truth if you rely on someone like Alex Jones. Okay, I told you he blacklisted me. He has Arnie Gunderson. Gunderson says he's read the FOIA documents, but he won't reveal to you what I have. They won't connect the dots. I wrote a book in all this time, guys. Since February, I just started writing a book, and I finished it. I finished it. And so they don't have any excuse. And again, I'd like to say one more time, I'm offering you inf information that counters. It says, look, if you look in the FOIA documents and read it, it says one thing. If you listen to Alex Jones, Natural News, the Intel Hub, RT, and all these other people, they don't know what they're talking about. And at some point, you say, look, it's not an accident. This is a careful disinformation campaign because they don't want the world to know. Fukushima was the worst case scenario. The worst that could have happened there has already happened there. Well, the problem is now we need to hold people accountable that participate in this massive cover-up and conspiracy. And, might I add, eventually we need to hold accountable the propagandists, these treasonous disinformationists who have denied from the American public critical information that, of, that is of a nature so important. Lives will be lost because people aren't staying out of the rain. People think their food is safe. Again, this is criminal. I've charged all these people with treason. Okay, and I will continue to do so, and I will continue to debunk Alex Jones and the rest of these criminal propaganda outlets, right? That's, that's my job. That's what I do, and I'm happy to do it. So thanks for joining me for this presentation, and get the word out. The worst of the worst has already happened. Let's use Plumegate. As I say, it's a silver bullet. proves nuclear powers beyond any help. It proves this massive conspiracy JFK talked about. If you want to get the guys who are doing the chemtrails and the GMOs and the war on terror crap and the staged false flags, they're indicated in these documents. It's that they're all working together. doing. They're, these are the same guys, folks. They're all the same guys. It's one conspiracy doing all this stuff, and we got them in the FOIA documents in Plumegate. We have the silver bullet. We just got to get the information out, and we have to bypass guys like Alex Jones and these other disinformation outlets, okay? And that's all I got to say for this particular video. Thank you very much for joining me. Get the information out. Hey, let's shut down nuclear power once and for all, okay? Patrick Penry, over now. Okay, YouTubers, this is a quick addendum to the video. Look, here's an email from the 18th of March where the guy says that if you look at the spent fuel pools and you look at how long the fuel has been in them, he says, the nucleides shown in red should all but decay, assuming the rods have been in the spent fuel pool for longer than six months. This means that distributing KI pills, potassium iodine pills, provide little benefit for the releases associated with spent fuel pool. Parentheses does provide benefit for core releases. And then he lists some of the nucleides, xenon and krypton. 
Well, folks, this rings true with the NILU uh, modeling that I took digital pictures of back in 2011. I'm going to show you those pictures along with this video. But the point to this addendum is that this person here says, look, when the fuel rods have been in there for longer than six months, okay, and in spent fuel pool number four, we know 500 or so were just recently put in there, but the others had been in there longer than six months. The releases from those when we have this uh, Coria meltdown and what have you, it's going to be a lot of xenon, a lot of xenon, okay? And now take a look at the next three uh, screen captures pictures I have for you and look at the xenon modeling from back in 2011. Okay, I just wanted to add that in there. Thank you very much. Over now.